Well, we knew it was coming. The atmospheric river flowing into California today, bringing up significant amounts of moisture and warm air, melting that record snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas. Going back to the overnight hours, this is the radar, and there is a lot of terrain blockage and that kind of thing, but you can see the whole thing working from north to south, and we've got this next band flowing into the Santa Barbara area, into Santa Maria and San Luis Obispo, and next up will be the Los Angeles area. And let's go to that surface chart. We are looking at two major systems, one on the west coast. This is responsible for that rain in California and further up north, snow squalls through Idaho and Montana. Got this warm front coming into the Colorado and Kansas area. And then in the eastern U.S., a little snowstorm working across the Great Lakes area. It moved through Milwaukee, Kenosha, into southern Michigan and entering New York and Ontario. So that will make kind of an ugly Friday evening in parts of the northeast. And then down to the south, some strong thunderstorms in the Jacksonville area to just north of Tallahassee, near this warm front. And you can see temperatures south of that in the 80s with dew points in the lower 60s. This is some great footage from today from the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality. This is around Kimberly, Idaho, and you can see that snow squall moving in looks very ominous. Temperatures in the 30s, and then as soon as it hits, a rapid cool down and snow with temperatures dropping into the 20s. And of course, SPC has been on top of this. This is from a mesoscale discussion talking about that snow squall, and it is creating some traffic problems out there around Pocatello. And I know you want to see what that snow squall looks like. So the area to watch is going to be Kimberly, located about right there. See that little flat part of the interstate? It's going to be right there on the left side. So down in California, yeah, a lot of rain near Sacramento. This is about 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning last night. We rolled that forward. Some snow showers moving across the area. We're up to about 7 a.m., and then we can see this convective area developing west of Boise. And as we go through the morning hours, it takes hold there, starting to break out those 40 dBZ values. And now we've got a full-fledged snow squall moving eastward. This is about the time it's approaching that camera. And a lot of it extending all the way down to Winnemucca, Nevada. So quite a rare desert phenomenon, and it surges eastward, and that's part of that frontal system moving east through Idaho, and that brings us up to the current time. It looks like it's moved through Pocatello, heading into Yellowstone, and approaching Salt Lake City. So they're going to be seeing some impacts later this afternoon and evening, and around Wendover and down towards Elko. Some of these showers down to the south around, uh, what is that, Battle Mountain? Yeah, those look kind of intense there. And we can segue into the short-term models. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh looking at 20Z. So that's going to be about 1 p.m. mountain time. So that's our little snow squall right there. Things looking pretty clear around the Salt Lake City area. But out to the west, that's going to be part of that frontal system. You can see the slight convergence in the wind field. So a little bit of low-level forcing going on there. And let's roll that forward. Well, things progress eastward, no surprise there, moving into Wyoming. And then we get this area of showers, and looks like the model is going for all liquid around 0Z. Zero so that's going to be about 5 p.m. around the evening commute. But you can see some evidence in the higher elevations that some of this is going to be snow. So it all depends on your elevation. Going into the nighttime hours, things continue moving eastward. And a lot of yellow indicating moderate intensities. And then as we close in on midnight, starting to enter the northwest corner of Colorado, not much southward progress, but some of these bands extend all the way down towards Tonopah. And everything continues progressing eastward overnight. So by the time we get up to 2 or 3 in the morning, some of these showers moving across the Rockies, and I don't know if they're going to do much in Denver. I have to check out some of the other charts for that but definitely a mix of precip out there in the western part of the state.
And of course, we have a lot of viewers there in California. So noon in California showing snow in the higher elevations. That snow level is quite high, so the foothills getting quite a bit of rain, and that's eating away at that snow in the medium elevations and sending it straight down through the rivers. And uh, you've probably seen on the news some clips of evacuations and raging floodwaters. A lot of that is in this area right here around Kernville. That's going to be northeast of Bakersfield. And out there over the San Joaquin Valley, a lot of rain. And further out to the west, more bands coming in. You can see that Los Angeles and Santa Barbara is starting to pick up some of that activity. So we set it into motion. The key indicator here is if you look at the winds, I've got the wind plots right there. That's going to be the surface winds. And they do have a significant southerly component. So we haven't really seen the front come through just yet. But... Uh, I think that's going to be it somewhere in here. And it seems to be acting a little bit more like a catafront. It's got clearing back behind it. And a lot of this stuff here, that's going to be orographically forced. What's impressive is there are some bands going into the Nevada desert. Tonopah located right here, Area 51, about right there, and Las Vegas here. So it has been bringing a mix of rain and snow to the deserts there. And the fact that it's crossing the Sierra Nevadas tells me that a lot of this is rooted in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. All right, so we go into the nighttime hours. Some showers starting to approach Las Vegas there. Looks like they're getting grazed about uh, 5 or 6 p.m. More bands out to the southwest and more showers out there west of Malibu. Working inland, you can see they're coming together, moving towards Los Angeles, located right there. That's going to be 4Z about uh, what is it, about 8 p.m. and moving through the valleys. So that will certainly have an effect in that area this evening. And then a little bit of clearing tonight. And that's the last frame that I have there. And a lot of people are probably wondering what's the potential for additional precipitation. This is the high resolution rapid refresh, one hour accumulated precip. This is in millimeters though, so it is a little bit weird. There are 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So these values of 10 that you see right here, those are gonna be about a third of an inch in one hour. Those are gonna be the oranges. And let's roll that and you can see that precip there off the coast of Los Angeles. Moving rapidly eastward, this is going to be about 4 p.m., spreading into Los Angeles, crossing over the city about 5 or 6. And we can see the precip winding down a little bit in the Sierra Nevadas. Still got some showers out there until the nighttime hours. That's going to be orographic precip. And gradually things come to a close. And that's going to be the last frame I have. That's about 2 in the morning. So a gradual improvement trend. And this is the chart that we use to assess upper level forcing. This is the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. Also got temperature. And I use temperature to look at the lapse rates. Gives me some indication where the colder mid-level air is. For example, out there in northern Idaho, temperatures minus 32 Celsius at 500 millibars, which is going to make for some steep profiles. So we drop that sounding up in that area and check out the forecast QTs. And the column is, that looks to be conditionally unstable. It would help to have the moist eddy bats to see that for sure. But that's some fairly steep lapse rates. And you can see the tropopause down there at about 24,000 feet above that. That's all stratosphere. And the jet stream, that's going to be it right there, connecting back into this other system. It's going to be crossing over Virginia into Atlantic City. And this is the left front quadrant right there. Some favorable upper level lift, and that's helping to generate some of that precip in New York and Pennsylvania. Another left front quadrant area moving into Montana. And earlier, that was in Idaho. So the combination of strong upper forcing that made a favorable pattern for that convective weather. In California, not much upper level energy. There is evidence of some short waves traversing the flow. However, a very saturated column, lots of precipitable water, orographic lift, warm air advection. You don't need a whole lot else to get heavy precip going. 
So we go forward, you can see the upper forcing moving quickly into the Dakotas by dawn. So that'll spread some of that precip into that area. And a lot of the heavier forcing in the northeast moving offshore. The fast upper air flow located right there. And the convergent left rear quadrant located right there. So that'll probably bring a little bit of improvement in the weather, except where there's lake effect snows. Looks like one little short wave coming through the Rockies. It's kind of hard to tell. You can see there's kind of a jagged pattern here. And that's due to gravity waves messing up these fine scale models. But yeah, that does look like a little piece of energy. See that right there? That's at 6 p.m. There's midnight. And then it looks like it's over the Rockies at dawn. So that could be something that will affect the central U.S. later on. Yeah, see that coming together right there? That's going to be tomorrow night. So that's another chunk of energy that you would want to keep an eye on if you were in Kansas or Missouri. In fact, tomorrow night, I do know that they are looking at a chance of severe weather in Arkansas. There you go. There's the day two convective outlook for tomorrow. Slight risk centered on hot springs extending up towards Tulsa, down to about Tunica, up to Memphis, and back towards Idabel. So that's going to be pretty much this area right there. A couple waves upstream. But we'll look at the surface patterns because those are going to be the dominant features that will affect tomorrow's situation. So looking at the NAM model, this is what we have right now. You can see that little area of wintry weather in New York moving eastward into Massachusetts and the other region in Utah and Wyoming shifting to the east. So we go through the overnight hours into the morning. Still got some residual snow up there in upstate New York into Massachusetts and Connecticut. And some snow in the mountains, maybe some rain in the lower elevations around Denver. You can see the remnants of that front up to the north. The frontal boundary is located right there. And the packing of the thickness lines back behind it. And back here, it does look like an anafront in Utah. Pressure falls in the southwest Kansas area. Warm air advection starting in Texas. Maybe a warm front kind of like that. And then we've got this other wave up there in the Dakotas. That's another piece of that upper air energy. So going through the day tomorrow, that warm air advection. And the smaller the boxes, the stronger the warm air advection. And then down to the south, closer to the warm air, some of that could result in strong thunderstorms especially later in the day towards peak heating. Okay. Also, we got this front surging south. That's it right there. Looks like it's connecting back up into this wave into the Dakotas. And then we got this other stagnant boundary to the west. That's probably looking like that right there. And the rest of this, this is all one big old happy ridge. Then going into tomorrow night. Yep, there's those storms in Little Rock, maybe some augmentation, maybe maybe a weak low-level jet. When you have that nocturnal tendency, that tells you that the low-level jet may be a factor. So it spreads out there into Tennessee. And the cold front comes south. That's it right there. Cold air advection during the day on Sunday. And it looks like we lose that frontal boundary out to the west. And up to the north, snow near that upper level low. All right, things move eastward pretty quickly going through the day on Sunday. Still got some snows up in the Great Lakes and looks like stormy weather once again in the northwest. And that brings us up to Monday. Big old ridge, cold air coming south. And stormy in the northwestern U.S. What are the chances of significant convection? This is the composite chart that I use going into tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, dew points up to 55 in Texas. We know from the SPC outlook that this is the area we're concerned about. So probably not a whole lot going on here. We can see that as we go into the midday hours, we develop some instability, probably some strong heating going on. And then 2000 capes up and down from about Paris, Texas down towards Austin. Now, based on this, the warm front is probably in here. And I'm looking at the thickness lines right here. This is the 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness. So the stronger warm air advection up here 
and the back flow, which is more supportive of severe structures, pretty much in the Arklatex northward. You can also see this surface low right there around Muskogee. Cold air advection coming in the wake. And this here, I think that might be a dry line. I'm not sure about that. I think there is a Pacific front back in here. But yeah, possibility for a dry line around Dallas-Fort Worth. But things move very quickly. This is midnight. Things already spreading up towards Memphis. Probably some outflow boundaries across Arkansas. And strong cold air advection pushing out a lot of the instability and moisture all the way down to the Gulf for Sunday. Things shift eastward into the southeastern U.S. for Sunday. We can see the risk area for Sunday is in southern Mississippi, southwestern Georgia, and southern Alabama. So around peak heating, some definite problems. And I'm not sure why it could be scoured moisture, but more likely, I think, maybe just extensive cloud cover. And the flow very veered there at the surface. So the photographs may be a little bit unidirectional. And then after that, the cold air surges south and the next chance of storms. Well, you can already see the dew points improving in Texas, 50 dew points by Thursday. And only by late Thursday do we start getting the instability back again. So this could have some potential for Thursday, but a very strong front barreling south, clearing things out once again. And this is a very cool chart. You only get this on this channel. This is the one kilometer AGL moisture and wind speed. So this kind of puts together the moisture, the low level jet. And we start out right now, you can see southerly flow, some moisture down to the south, but not much in the way of a low level jet. Most of that's out there on the high plains. So going into tomorrow, let's go up to peak heating Yep, you can see the moisture building in in East Texas, some higher values, and looking at the winds, 50 knots there out of the southwest around Fort Smith. And then by evening, looks like about 35 out of the southwest into Little Rock. So that's what will help support some of that storm activity there, some of that inflow coming in from the south, 30 to 40 knots, and moisture as well. All right, I've got to stop there. Usually when we close in on 4.40 p.m., I start getting nervous. When the videos get too long, when it gets too late, then you guys have to wait forever, and I really don't want that. A very nice message from Mike Lammers. He says, I enjoy your weather briefings as a retired National Weather Service meteorologist, now living in Cheyenne. Still in retirement, I keep abreast with weather changes, not only in Alabama, but where I grew up in the Kansas City area, where I was in the Weather Service for six years, and then in Goodland, Kansas for 19 years. Keep up the excellent work. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that message, and I always welcome hearing from our National Weather Service viewers. We do have a few of them out there. All right. That's going to be it for this Friday edition. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and we will see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a good one. Bye-bye.